Hi, welcome back to Mind Control, where we inspire and motivate you. Hope you enjoy the video. Now, Shof also said, when you find out something that works, put the information in your journal. Don't use your head for a filing cabinet. Put it in your journal so that you can do the next best thing. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Go over it. And if you repeat it, go over it, sure enough, someday, some mysterious day, the idea takes root, starts to grow, and shows up in your bank account, and your dress, and your personality, and your lifestyle. But capture the ideas in your journal. Find out how things work. Shof gave me this word for my life change. He said, study. Great word. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Don't leave it to chance. Make it a study. Some people just go through the day with their fingers crossed. See, that won't do it. You've got to study the things that can change your economic, social, spiritual, personal life. Now, here's a qualifying phrase, and we'll have several of these qualifying phrases throughout the seminar. Here's the first one. You may not be able to do all you find out. I understand that. You may not be able to do all you find out, but you should find out all you can do. See, you don't want to wind up at the end of your life and discover that you've lived only one tenth of it. And the other nine tenths went down the drain, not for lack of opportunity, for lack of information. So that's number one, find out how things work. Now here's the best human virtue for finding out, curiosity. Make a note of that, curiosity, be curious. You might add a word to it that'll help. Childish curiosity. What will kids do if they want to know something bad enough? Bug you, that's the phrase. They can ask a thousand questions. You think they're through? They got another thousand. They'll drive you to the brink. It's a virtue. When you gotta know, be like a child. In fact, Jesus, the master teacher said, unless you can become like little children, you might as well forget it. You don't have a prayer. Excellent advice. You got to be like children. Four ways, in my opinion, to be like a child. Number one is curiosity. Number two is excitement. Get excited like a child over your ability to make yourself do anything for change. Third is faith. Have faith like a child. Adults are too skeptical. And fourth is trust. Trust is a childish virtue, but the rewards are incredible. Now here's the second step to personal development. Okay, number one was find out how things work. Here's number two, go to work. You must now take action on what you found out. In doing business around the world, we call it game plan. Put together your game plan. One of the major things we teach on the weekend seminars, game plans. How to game plan your office. If you're in sales, you need a game plan. Kids need a game plan. You need a home game plan, social game plan, a business game plan. Everybody needs game plans. Financial independence, game plan. Your investment, game plan. Don't think in your head. Put it on paper. Don't operate out of your mind. Operate from paper. I often ask somebody, what are you going to do the next six months? And somebody starts to tell me. I say, no, don't tell me. Show me. Show me your game plan for the next six months. Then I can look at things and maybe I can help. But you got to operate from paper. Put it on a game plan. Take action on what you found out. Now here's the best word I know of to go with action. Massive. See, that'll change everything. Massive action is called the cure-all. If you're going to make calls, make a few thousand. If you're going to make contacts, make a few thousand. If you're going to knock on doors, knock on a few thousand. See, that'll change everything. Here's the language of the poor. I'll try it a time or two and see what happens. It's the way poor people talk. The guy says, well, I'll give it 30 days. 30 days, you could guess his bank balance. You've got to have a better game plan. So here's one of the major things to do starting tomorrow. Take a look at your game plan. 
If it isn't loaded with massive action, change it tomorrow. Action. The formula really works like this. Pick up a good idea, take heavy action. Pick up a couple of good ideas, take heavy action. That's the formula for sex, success. Heavy action. It's a good thing we can edit all this, right? The formula for success, take heavy action on a good idea, right? That's the ratio. Now here's the key. Don't wait till you've learned two or 3,000 things because that way you'll use up all the time. And you could wind up smart and broke. And hey, it's okay to be dumb and broke. But if a guy's smart and broke, that's pitiful. Don't let your learning lead to knowledge. You'll become a fool. Let your learning lead to action. You can become wealthy. And there's many kinds of wealth, I understand that, not just money. Money is one of the least of all values. I know some people with a lot of money that are very poor. Evita sings, as for fortune and as for fame, they are illusions. They're not the solutions they promised to be. So there's all kinds of wealth, but to get a big share coming your way, you've got to have a heavy action game plan. Now here's the third step to personal development and we'll wrap up personal development. Step number three, it's just a little caution and all through life we need little cautions. This one simply says, don't try to beat the system. Find out how it works, work it, but don't try to beat it. Some people learn just enough to start slicing it, shading it, thinning it, cutting corners, and looking for cheap answers. See, don't fall for that. You'll wind up with a cheap life. Find out how it works best and do it that way. Even though it seems to take a little longer, do it right. Don't compromise with right. Now under this step, here's another key. Be a quick learner. Don't let it take long to teach you learn quicker. One guy said he broke his nose seven times in the same place. Somebody says, looks like you'd stay out of that place. <laughs> learn quicker. Now the third point here is don't be stubborn. See, some people won't change even when a better way comes. They say, well, I've been doing it this way 30 years. Hey, be ready for change. If it's a better way, go for it. But don't try to beat it. We'd like to thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Please also like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and families. Please watch our other motivational videos. Thank you again. For every struggle in your life, there is a strategy. They didn't get it either. I'm going to try y'all. For every struggle in your life, there is a strategy. They got it. When it comes to things that really matter in life, I think all of us know that better is a perspective. You know why you think some people's lives are better than yours? Because you see the part that they show you. They might have a better house, but I wonder what goes on inside. And see, you don't know which one's better. If you live long enough, you will find out that some of the people you spent so much of your time envying were secretly miserable. There is something in you that will deliver you, but in order to produce it, you have to go through the dark place. Because what God has for you is too big for you to be small. What God has predestined for you is too big for you to be petty it's too big for you to hold a grudge every season of our life is part of the whole and it should be embraced even the painful season the more we resist the more it's going to hurt and the longer it's going to take you will grow through what you go through you will grow through what you go through 
What has your name on it will not go to anyone else. What belongs to you will not go to another person. God has somebody ordained for you. You won't have to beg them to stay, talk them into calling you, convince them to spend in time. They'll be so in love with you, you can't get rid of them. Stay in that weight room. Be patient. We got to go backwards to get better. We got to go all the way back to get better. I have to be comfortable in my life to accept that sometimes loss is the way to gain. To know that sometimes the most painful moments are the most purposeful moments. I have to be comfortable in my life to stop comparing myself so much with people who are not meant to be the standard anyway. Now, I don't know what you're facing today, but I know this everybody in the world faces. If it ain't nothing but life, if you don't have nothing to fight but life, if everybody likes you and you're just as beautiful as you can be and as healthy as an Olympian, if you deal with nothing but life, life will try you to the bridge. No matter what comes against us, we will make it through. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. That doesn't mean there's going to be no pain involved. But truly, we can do all things. Yes, you can make it through whatever you're going through right now. You can get so strong in spirit that you can be going through really, really difficult things. And while you are, you're still reaching out and helping other people. And they don't even know what you're going through. I'm not in this by myself. I'm not in this thing by myself. You, you are not alone in the battle. You're not alone in the struggle that God has a strategy. And when it's all over, you're going to see that even though you couldn't see him, he was there all the time. So on the outside, people don't look broken. You don't see bruises and you don't see scratches and you don't see scrapes and people don't walk around in a big cast and so you can't tell with the naked eye. The problem is that there's a malfunction on the inside. So many times depression, what it feels like is this, that I'm so afraid to share what's going on the inside because I'm afraid it might destroy you. So what I do is I bury it on the inside of myself, only destroy myself. No matter how hard someone tries to get what's yours, they may manipulate, connive, ignore, leave you out. The oil is not going to flow to them. What has your name on it is coming your way. The person, the job, the opportunity, the promotion cannot go to anyone else. That's why we don't have to live jealous or envious of others. People around you change. And you can't, sometimes it's for the better, but sometimes it's not. And it's not bad. It's just that season was over in my life. And so here's the thing. If we try to keep hanging on to something when God is finished with it, there's no point in continuing to try to hang on to something that God's done with it because all it's going to do is keep you from the next great thing that God has for you. I feel real strongly tonight to tell you guys, spring is right around the corner. Don't give up and don't be afraid of change and don't keep trying to hang on to something that's just not working anymore. Trust God for something better. You know what? Some of us are so used to bad that we reject better when it comes. Sometimes God proves his love to us by what he's not letting us have doesn't mean that it's never going to happen. We just have to spend more time in the weight room, growing, developing, learning to forgive, learning to keep a good attitude when things aren't going our way. The sooner we pass these tests, the sooner God will release what belongs to us. When something is just beginning to bud, there is also trouble rising up right beside. When the wheat came up, the tear came up with it. Not because the wheat wasn't real, but because it was. It came up at the same time. Life is crazy. It can be the best time in your life and the worst time all at the same time. You can either stand up and take that small step forward. You don't have to know where you're going. You don't have to have the perfect plan. You don't have to know what tomorrow holds. 
but you can either get up and take that small step or you're going to sit at that kitchen counter for the rest of your life. And now, years later, I push through those hard times and I realized and I truly believe in now that the smallest of steps eventually completes the grandest of journeys. You can have what other people can't have. You can go where other people can't go. You can ask what other people can't ask for because you are not a whosoever. Quit acting like a whosoever. Quit asking like a whosoever. Quit asking like you don't have a right to go in boldly and ask. You are a chosen generation. You are a peculiar people. Say, I'm not a whosoever. Our problems do not overshadow our purpose. Our weaknesses do not discount our work, and our deficiencies definitely do not delay our destiny. We have to learn how to work our weakness. You gotta work your weakness because all of us, to some degree, have a thorn in our flesh. We all have gaps, we all have deficiencies, we've all made mistakes, we've all got these things that feel like a thorn in our flesh. The thing that you are up against right now is not about you. The battle is not yours. It belongs to God. That doesn't mean that you don't have to show up for the fight. It just means that ultimately the victory that you seek is not your victory. It is the victory because God has a purpose in you getting the victory over this situation. It is not you that's getting the victory. It is God that's getting the victory. God is using you to get his victory. And as soon as you get that strength, you can get down to business. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. Happiness is not an accident. It is first a study and then a practice. You would naturally assume that most people would make a careful study of them. Why they do not is yet another example of those aspects of life that fall into the category of mysteries of the mind. Remember, major keys to your better future are going to be ideas and information. Open people like to live on the periphery of boundaries, and they like to break boundaries between things because interesting things happen when you think a different way, when you think outside of the box, so to speak. That's what open people do. They always think outside of the box, no matter what box you put them in. You know, and sometimes you meet people that are so open that they're completely disorganized. Their thought process is almost completely associational, like a dreamer. They just jump from one thing to another. They're very interesting to talk to. It's very hard for those people to get their lives together because they're interested in absolutely everything and their attention just flits all over the place. If we have any lack, it is not because we lack money or opportunity or resources. It is because we lack ideas that have taken form from information. If you search, you will find. So that is the way to discover ideas and life-changing information. Search. In order to find, you must search. You must go and engage in conversations with people of substance. You must go looking, go searching. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. And as you make a diligent search, you will find just the ideas you need. Everybody's been through some shit in their childhood. Alcohol and drug abuse, family members, grandmother, family dying, and it all sets you back. It's a setback for a setup to get to the ultimate blessings. And I came to speak to somebody today who, who has some triumph in your life, but you've also got some trouble. You, you've got some joy in your life, but you've also got some sadness. Until you have had the taste of finishing, you will not respect yourself. Until you follow through, until something is done, come hell or high water, tears and struggles and pain, and you go through it anyway, and you show up, and you continue to fight on, no matter the circumstances. Courage is the key. Courage is the key. Confidence 
that is never the promise of God that is in question. It is our confidence in that promise. So why not reach down inside of you and come up with some more of those remarkable human gifts? They're there waiting to be discovered and employed. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. If you don't like how it is for you, change it. If it isn't enough, change it. If it doesn't suit you, change it. And I challenge you to do all that because you can change. See, you don't ever have to be the same after today, only by choice. Now for the process of change, just a philosophical pronouncement won't do. It takes more than that, and it takes more than enthusiasm. You can get all excited about lifting 200 pounds until you get to the gym. Then you need a new excitement, and the new excitement is discipline. Discipline, the major step to human progress. If there is one thing to get excited about, this is it. Get excited about your ability to make yourself do the necessary things to get a desired result. That's true excitement. So remember, if you find yourself doing something that doesn't seem to be supporting you in the long term, remember at some level your brain thinks it's supporting you, at least in the short term. Don't feel bad about it. Don't go, oh gosh, here I am, this failure. Some of the most successful people that I've interviewed and worked with have had self-sabotage. It's just a pattern we once in a while get, and you can just change it now. Very easy. You can free yourself from self-sabotage right now by knowing from this day forward that if you ever start to sabotage yourself, one, try another approach. Maybe it's you're just not paying attention. Maybe you're not focusing. Maybe you just got some poor habits. For just bad habits, refocus and decide what you do want to accomplish. Really making personal changes calls for 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. Wishing we could change is a beginning, but now wish must be translated into activity, and inspiration and affirmation must lead to discipline. We can affirm that we are going to change, but we must now form new habits and develop new disciplines for the affirmation to come true. We can look at developing ourselves spiritually, physically, and mentally. With respect to our spiritual development, this may be a major or a minor issue for you depending on your values and your goals. Come to your own decisions as to what it will take to nourish your spiritual nature. Next, let's look at physical development. The body and the mind work together and depend on each other, so they both need attention. Treat your body like a temple. So just put it in your notes, body like temple. Not a bad suggestion. Now, in taking care of the physical, we must learn to be conscious of ourselves, but not self-conscious. We need to be aware of our physical appearance, our physical well-being, but not to the point of being self-conscious. But some people devote too much of their day to physical appearance. Physical appearance is going to have something to do with your future, your well-being, so do spend some time on physical appearance. How we appear to other people does make a difference in terms of our acceptance and our ability to function and do well in the marketplace. If you do have a pattern, realize that any pattern you have, including self-sabotage, still comes back to one thing. Human beings, no matter what we're doing, including sabotaging ourselves, we do it for a positive intent. If it clearly is a pattern where you are subconsciously sabotaging yourself, screwing things up, hey, get excited. Don't get upset. Say, hey, look, my brain is doing what it does best. Personal development, how important. Remember, the major key to your better future is you. That's a sentence with a lot of value. The major key to your better future is you. For a share of my life, I didn't understand the importance of that phrase. I used to wonder why two people could work for the same company and one make twice as much money. Wouldn't that be a puzzle? I know there are many ways to do well, but in this narrow area called compensation, what is the difference? I thought time makes some of the difference. Some people do better because they have more time. Now that's got to be dumb, right? You can't get someone else's time. There isn't any more time. Where would you find any? Hey, when the clock strikes 12 midnight, that's about it. It's over. There isn't any more time. If you insist on finding more than 24 hours a day, they will come and take you away. Identify a behavior that's keeping you from getting your goals, something that's stopping you or holding you back. Once you've identified it, 
Ask yourself, what is the positive intent here? What is my brain trying to give me? Get some leverage on yourself so that you can make the change. Teach your brain that, hey, if I don't change this thing, you got to have a little conversation in your head. You see, what you become is far more important than what you get. However, it is also true that what you become directly influences what you get. Most of what we have, we have attracted by the person we have become. So here's the great challenge of life. You can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. That is the great focus of attention for life change. Now, on the other side of the coin, it reads, unless you change how you are, you'll always have what you've got. I've discovered that income does not usually exceed personal development. Sometimes income takes a lucky jump, but unless you keep growing out where it is, it will usually come back where you are. Life has strange ways. A very rich man once said, if you took all the money in the world and divided it equally among everybody, it would soon all be back in the same pocket. I guess it is hard to keep what you haven't attracted by your own personal development. It's not what we can do that's in question. What we can do is fantastic. What we can do is unbelievable. What we can do, it's what we settle for that's disappointing. What we become is what leads to all the good things. And the habits we form, habits of mind, attitude, and behavior, are a dominant part of what we are becoming. Now, I understand as well as anyone that forming new habits doesn't come easy. But new habits will come when we change. But rather by changing small pieces and parts at a time. I think that's how most of us change. We just keep nudging ourselves in the right direction, forming one or two new habits at a time, little by little, until finally we've made the turn. And this is where the good life comes from, those personal changes. There's nothing you can do with the seasons, but there's everything you can do with yourself. Wish for your own attitude, strength, and capabilities to change in order to handle the winters time we will probably use them all unless somebody finally comes along and blows all those excuses apart to make us come face to face with the real reasons for our current dilemma until that time we will probably use another million excuses to prevent ourselves from having a million dollars here's one of the major questions I'll pose to you during this program what are you going to do starting today that will make a difference in how your life works out. See, if you don't do something starting today that will make a difference, guess what? It's going to be the same. And you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Just look at the last five. Now here's another key question. What can you do starting today that will make a difference? That's a good question. What can you do? What can you do with economic chaos? What can you do with massive disappointment when it's all gone wrong? What can you do when it won't work, when you've run out of money, when you don't feel well, and it's all gone sour? What can you do? Well, let me give you the broad answer first. Here's what you can do. You can do the most remarkable things, no matter what happens. Hey, people can do incredible things, unbelievable things. A man can do the most amazing things with the most impossible circumstances. A woman can do the most remarkable things with the most disastrous circumstances. Hey, I found out kids can do remarkable things. That is, if they have remarkable things to do. I also found out if they don't have remarkable things to do, there's no telling what they'll do. For things to change for you, you've got to change no matter what successes you've already achieved. Otherwise, it isn't going to change for you. I sure hope things will change. That seemed to be my only hope. If it wasn't going to change, I was in serious trouble. Then I found out it wasn't going to change, and I was in serious trouble. Hey, remember, it isn't going to change. Not long ago, I did a seminar for a group of oil company executives during their convention in Honolulu. 
Sitting around this conference table, one of them asked, Mr. Rohn, you know some important people around the world. What do you think the next 10 years are going to be like? I said, gentlemen, I do know the right people. I can tell you. So they all listened very carefully. I said, gentlemen, based on the people I know and from the best of my own experience, I've concluded that in the coming 10 years, it's going to be about like it's always been. What's the first thing they say when you get on an airplane before they take off? Fasten your seat belt. Why? Because you will experience some turbulence before you reach a comfortable altitude. The only way to get unstuck is that you need something stronger, something greater, pulling the thing that is stuck. Because there's some people today that you're single and you feel like you're stuck. You feel like you're at a halt. You don't feel like you can progress in life. You don't have to be popular to be powerful. I ended up going to dinner with, becoming friends with, eating with, fellowshipping with people who started out hating me. I had the capacity to withstand their hatred and the capacity to embrace their friendship. I understood that time defines you. Some people will understand you later. I didn't have the help I needed. I didn't have the money to do what I was doing. I didn't know anybody. But I knew one thing. I'm not in this thing by myself. It's not about perfection, it's about progression. But some of you right now, you've got it in your mind. The only way I can progress is if I get a partner. Oh, but friend, you need something bigger than a partner to pull you out of this season where you feel like you're stuck. Guess what you need? You don't need a partner, you need a God-given purpose. You need something stronger to pull you from the place where you feel like you're stuck. We all go through times well, it doesn't feel like we're making progress. We're being our best, but not getting good breaks. The problem hasn't turned around. When we're not getting our way, we're doing the right thing, but we're being overlooked. Our friend got married, but we're still single. We're working harder than our coworker, but they got the promotion. We feel overlooked, undervalued, forgotten. These times of isolation where you're not being celebrated are extremely valuable. Nothing may be changing on the outside, but something's happening on the inside. Your character is being developed. You're learning to not depend on people. You're gaining experience, maturity, strength that you'll need to go where God is taking you. I think we live in a world that doesn't know the difference between the public moments and the private moments. I think we're increasingly becoming, and this is just my old man rant, so please let me do it right now, because like I said, I'm a parent now, and I'm so scared for my kids who are growing up in a world where now they're growing up publicly. Everybody has their own broadcast journalism degree called Twitter. Everybody has a license to express their own opinion. And the phrase that got me is what his brother said. They want to convince him. They say, you got to get out of Galilee. This is too remote. This is not the right place for you to become a public figure. I'm telling you, it ain't nothing as dangerous as somebody who's making a comeback. You haven't had a fight till you get in the ring with somebody who's making a comeback. You haven't been through hell till you run up and punch somebody who ain't got nothing to do. Slap somebody and say, nowhere to go but up. Already lost everything, already been through trouble, already been embarrassed, already been humiliated, already been talked about, already been laughed at, already been betrayed, already had my feelings hurt. Tell somebody said nowhere to go but up.
You can start to make a new stretch today. You can sign up for some new classes today. You can start engaging in constructive thinking today. You can make some life-changing decisions today. So you don't ever have to be the same again, only by choice. And while you wait for prices to come down, I would go to work immediately and quickly on the refinement of your own thinking and the refinement of your own disciplines and watch how quickly the equity of that starts to grow. Now this is called dealing in straight talk. Let's go do it. This is what I found out being a professional alone person. It's okay to be alone. I get over a thousand messages every single day. And a lot of people write to me saying, Ralph, I just can't seem to find anybody I can get on with. And I don't like it. It's okay to be alone. The reason why a lot of people experience a lot of loneliness is because they are in resistance to being alone. Because being alone is frightening for the majority of the human race. You gotta be with yourself. You gotta go within. A lot of stuff is gonna come out. That's why a lot of us, we wanna always be with friends. But if you continue just to follow the crowd, you will only go as far as the crowd. Life situations is to use the illustration of the seasons. Number one, you cannot change the seasons until you get your own planet. All of this has been set in motion. But here's the next piece of information. You can change yourself. You can't change the seasons, but you can change yourself. Life and business is like the changing seasons. Frank Sinatra saying, life is like the seasons. First, learn how to survive the winter. Speaking of life in its simplest aspect, the first key to learn in your life on the spinning planet is to learn how to survive. Now there's all kinds of winters, right? The winter of the calendar, right? The winter of the actual season. But then there's financial winters and social winters, personal winters. But we understand those because we've all been through. Now here's the key on the winters. Some are long and some are short. Some are easy and some are tough. But they always come right after harvest, right after fall, autumn. So we cannot rearrange the coming of the winters, but here's what we could do. Get stronger, wiser, and better so that we can survive better. And our life will be less eroded by learning to handle the next winter, the next winter of a divorce, the next winter of an illness, the next winter of a death in the family, the next winter of a loss financially, the next winter of a, a crisis of whatever kind to be better equipped. So here's the key to learn the season so that you can approach it all in a very intelligent way. So you must think negative when it's positive. You must think winter when it's summer. Here's some of the best advice. It comes from classic tradition. A great story says, don't build your house on the sand in the summer. You must not be faked out when it's nice. You must think storm in the summer and not get faked out. And if you think storm, now you'll look for a rock on which to build your house. Now you're gonna be safe. So you can't think nice when it's nice. You gotta think storm when it's nice. The seasons are gonna come and change. And if you're not educated to that degree, now you suffer a great loss. Now here's the next philosophy. The time to think positive is when it's negative. Why? Because the negative won't last long. How long is the winter? Isn't that long? Just hang on, it's not gonna take that long. How long is the night? It's only a few hours. There's never been a double night. Couldn't you make it a few more hours? And the story says, yes, the, the night just can't last. Sometimes it seems like it's gonna last forever. And when you have insomnia, right? It seems like the night will never pass. But I'm telling you, sure enough, it will pass. So learn to think day when it's night. And then you must learn to think night when it's day. So you have to get it going, get it in, before the night came. So, this is a good idea now. Learn to think negative when it's positive. Learn to think storm when there is no storm. Learn to think winter in the summer. 
But then we must learn to think summer in the winter. We can make it through a few more hours, right? A few more days. Won't be that long. Hang in here. The spring will surely come. So the winters of life, learn to express those to other people, help them understand that as well as to try to understand it yourself. Now here's the next season, the spring. Spring is called opportunity, not a guarantee. It's guaranteed the spring will come, but it's not a guarantee of a harvest. Here's the key, you must do something with the spring. Take advantage of the spring. Read every book you can get your hands on what to do with the springs of your life. Take advantage of the day, because the day follows the night. It's an opportunity now to turn things around. It's an opportunity to have a better one than, than the last one. It's an opportunity for a new beginning, a new spring, a new day, a new beginning. So spring is the, is the chance to take advantage of another opportunity. Now, here's what you must do in the spring. It's a very short season usually, you must hurry. You wouldn't ask a farmer to go bowling in the spring. He hasn't got time, why? The season is too short. The planting season is too short. You've got to get it done fairly quickly. Now we call spring a window of opportunity. If you have a chance to talk to someone, the window's open. It may not stay open very long, so take advantage. Don't hesitate, meet a new friend. Talk to somebody while the window's open. Now here's the season for everybody to understand because it is so applicable to our life and that's the season of summer. Two things we must do in the summer, nourish our values and protect. Nourish like a mother, protect like a father. The twin challenges in the summertime help to illustrate life, that we are confronted with both good and evil. When you're at the top, when you're an owner or you're the leader, there's times where you have to do things by yourself. There's no doubt about that. And if you have a problem with that, you're going to have a problem being in a leadership position. Because there's things that you have to do as a leader. You have to lead from the front. You have to work harder. You have to do extra. And if you're not, that's not good. And if you're, if you're working harder, there's going to be times when you're not with anyone else. And you have to be okay with that. That's what that expression means, it's lonely at the top, meaning like you're at the top because you're willing to behave or be a certain way that other people either can't oh, yeah, or yeah, won't, yeah. right? From that perspective, you're definitely lonely at the top. Yeah. There's no one that's going to sit there and do what I'm willing to do to be there. Like, where are you at? I don't know. Haven't seen you. If you want any value at all, come harvest. You got to press. You got to be bold. The high life is not for the timid and the shy. Some people mistake timidity for humility. Humility is a virtue. Timidity is a disease. Humility is almost godlike word. A sense of awe, a sense of wonder, a sense of understanding the distance in worth, an awareness of the human soul, the spirit, something unique about the human drama versus the rest of life. A grasp of the distance between us and the stars, and yet having the feeling that we're part of the stars. It's okay to dream, but we must not just become a dreamer. Be proud, but not arrogant. It takes pride to win the day. It takes pride in company, opportunity. It takes pride in group, organization. It takes pride in cause and accomplishment. But the key is to be proud without being arrogant. If you want the audacity to be successful, don't you understand the crap that comes along with that? Like, I wanted the audacity to be in shape. It's come with a lot of crap. It's been a lot of work. You deal with it because it's a very small price to pay for all the phenomenal stuff that you headline read and you aspire to and you dream for. The problem is most of you don't want to eat that shit to get there. Analyze where you are, going to your store. What's in here? What's old? What's the king? What stinks? Okay, what's that over there? Negative attitude, we gotta get rid of that one. Negative people, we can't hang anymore, you got to go. We can't do this anymore. Fear, come out of there. What's over there in the corner? Procrastination, what's over there? Okay, bad attitude, all that stuff, get out of there. I throw it out, it's got to go. And what do I need? What do I need to get me from where I am to where I need to go? What do I need? Okay, I need more people who dream like me, who think like me, who can stretch and grow like me. I gotta surround myself with more people like that. All right, good. I, I need more confidence here. I need to develop more belief in my ideas and in my, in my plans. I've got to do that. What else do I need to get to where I need to get to? To get to survival, to live. What, I, what do I need? Okay, I'm going to a new place. I need new skills. 
So this is what it is, inventory. Throw out what you don't need and what you need. Here's one of the, the better realistic illustrations, and that's health and illness at odds in your body. Illness trying its best to drive health into a small corner and occupy the territory. And health trying what? To push illness into a small corner. There's this contest going on. Who's going to occupy the territory? If one stays strong, the other is diminished. If the other gains in power, then the other is diminished. So what you must learn to do is cooperate with the positive side of everything in your body and your life. Sometimes we sabotage our own best interest. Because if we get weak, I'm telling you, it moves in, moves in, moves in, takes the territory. So we're in the middle of this contest, and here's what it's called, opposites in conflict. Good, evil, liberty, tyranny, right? Health, illness, winning and losing, right? There's, a, there's the struggle going on. But here's the key. It's the only way, it seems, it's the only way to create a human adventure. It doesn't seem to be any other way currently. It seems like to create an adventure, to create a unique human scenario, we need opposites in conflict. And it's the only way to have a civilized society. And we've got to fight these skirmishes. We've been fighting them forever. We've got to fight them forever. Whether they're inside your own body or whether they're in politics, no matter where they are, we must play this game. We must fight this game. But here's what it creates, a great adventure. Let me give you the ultimate now. Could you win if you couldn't lose? And the answer is no, it doesn't seem like it. You, you couldn't call it winning. You can't win if you couldn't lose. So that's the deal now. Negative, positive. Would there be negative, uh, positive without negative? No, it doesn't seem like it. It seems like this is the current setup, you know, for the foreseeable future. It looks like it's been that way as long as we can remember and as long as the history tells us. So here's what you want to do if you want the adventure. You must learn to play this game to work with all the positive forces to defeat the negative forces as early and as soon and as much as possible. To contain the ravages of disease that want to take you early. You got to fight back. You can't just leave it. Somebody says, well, I got my fingers crossed. Not a good philosophy. You got to take your vitamins. You got to do the stuff. You got to do the deal. Jump on the positive side of whatever you want and see if you can't help out in this warfare and this push-shove match. That's the key. So in the summer, here's what you must do. Nourish the plants and the garden. Nourish your values like a mother. Give life. Whatever you start now, you must nourishment and give it life. Don't neglect a new life if you've started a new life. What if you said to a brand new mother, where is your baby? She says, I have no idea. You would say, no, that isn't right. If you start a new life, you must care for it. You must protect it. You must give it life, give it nourishment. Now, here's the other part. You must protect it like a father. That's why the old wise man said, we must learn to love and hate. And the illustration he used was, you must learn to love good and hate evil. To deal with the weeds in your garden, you've got to hate weeds. You've got to hate them enough to what? Kill them. You can't say, well, poor weeds. Say, no, this ain't the deal, poor weeds. So learn the good evil. Now here's the greatest battle in the mind. Here's what you must not become in the summer in your mind, a victim of yourself. What is that insidious voice inside your own head that says you're too short, it'll never work for you, you're too tall, right? It's over for you. It's never worked for you before. What gives you any idea that it'll work for you now? You've never been able to rise up and take charge of your life. What makes you think you can do it now? There's going to be too many obstacles out there. You'll never overcome them all. What is that insidious voice? It's the same game going on inside your head that's going on in the world. Liberty and tyranny in a push-shove match. And here's what you've got to do. Cooperate with the positive side of your life and let faith drive out doubt. Right? Let winning drive out losing. Let positive drive out negative. But you've got to get into the contest. And why get into the contest? Because that's how you create an adventure. There is no other way. It takes both. You've got to learn to laugh, yes. But that's not what the wise men only said. You can't just learn to laugh and keep on laughing. No, that's silly. It says there's also a time to cry. You've got to learn to both laugh and cry. Then it said you must be so sophisticated as not to laugh when it's time to cry. 
Then it further says, you must learn to laugh with those that laugh and learn to cry with those that cry. That now gives you an understanding of what life is all about. Sadness and joy, the contest, the difference. And yet it creates the adventure. But here's the adventure to overcome the evil, to put evil in its place. Just like in your mind, you've got to stand guard at the door of your mind and see if you can't suppress, see if you can't do battle with the negative forces. Don't become a victim of yourself. Beware of the thief on the street that's after your purse, but also beware of the thief in your mind that's after your promise. See if you can't engage in this mental contest and win the day. That's the summer. Now here's one more season, and that's the season of harvest. Here's the key to remember harvest time, in due season, in due time, when it's time. And part of this is to develop the patience so that when it's time, it will come. But you cannot be impatient. Patience is part of the game here. You can't plant the seed and two, three days later, dig around and say, where's my crop, where's my crop? You say, no, come on, that's foolish. We'll take you away to some safe place. This you got to plant and wait and exercise patience. And then when it comes time, you give it nourishment and you give it care and you give it protection. And then you got to wait some more and you got to wait some more and you got to wait some more.